Hello everyone and welcome to another segment of Fairy Tale Games Battle Royale. Today we'll be talking about the demo kit. The demo kit is downloadable online and it's a, basically a condensed version of uh, Fairy Tale Games Battle Royale. There's about 25% uh, of the cards in the demo kit, uh, which will kind of give you an idea when you play through it about 75 to 80% of the gameplay mechanics in the overall game. Uh, so right now, uh, our, our goal is to kind of go through some of the components and the basic ideas behind the, the uh, gameplay so you can go ahead and try out the demo kit yourself. Now, um, first off, uh, I am a little bit under the weather, so uh, be careful. I'm going to be coughing and hacking and clearing my throat every once in a while, so don't have your, uh, your headphones volume all the way up because I might surprise you. So, okay. Um, Let's go through some of the components right now. You have your character boards, you have your bonus deck, your quest cards, your location deck, your event deck right here, tactic cards, battle deck, minions, boss. I use, I'm using two D6s, and I have, uh, I guess, two different color uh, little counter tokens that I'm going to use to gauge my. Uh, traits, which are also my health and reputation, or kill points. Um, also, you can use whatever you want as player tokens. I'm actually using the uh, manufacturer proofs of the Fairy Tale Games Battle Royale um, right there. But you can use whatever you want. And uh, I guess let's uh, let's kind of get started and uh, talk about the different components. So right here is the bonus deck. Now, actually, before I even begin talking about that, this is pretty much how, um, with the exception of the character board, uh, this is pretty much how the setup is. You have a bonus deck on this side, one end. You have your event deck on the other because they both need discard piles. You have your three different tiers of quests, uh, quests that, rep that require a reputation of one and two, uh, a tier 2 which is the reputation of 3 and 4, tier 3 which is a uh, reputation of um, uh, 5 and 6 are required, and then you have your location cards right here. All the battle stuff is over here. Your tactic cards are here in case you know uh, you need to shuffle through them to find uh, tactics if you add allies to your party. But uh, let's go through the <clears throat> bonus cards right now. Okay, so in the bonus uh, bonus deck, there's uh, a few different types of cards. There's just going to be action cards, character cards, as well as uh, the items. So the first type of card is an action card. Um, here, let's see if I can show the camera somehow. Now, I'm not a professional at uh, demoing stuff on camera, so... Okay, so this is an action card. This is a quickness spell. Um, action cards... Uh, can be played f from your hand. Uh, so depending on what the action card does, you could play it from your hand during quest uh, quest mode or through battle mode. Uh, battle mode is when you enter combat with someone. So uh, and you can play it from your hand without having to equip anything or, or spend action points or anything like that. You're just basically, it's in your hand, I can play it when I play it. Now some don't have costs, some do, like this one quickness spell has uh, if you spend three magic traits, then you get to take the initiative during battle, which means if someone tries to attack you first, you play this and you automatically attack them first. So it's not someone's ambushing you, you turn it on them. And you all, uh, and if you don't want to use that ability, you could the secondary choice is you could spend the three magic, and instead of the initiative during battle, you can gain plus five movement since it's a quickness spell, which... If your character, like for example, Robin Hood right here, has five movement, then you could, for this one turn, can get ten movement. And depending on on how your map board uh, becomes, you know that could be quite an advantage. So you know, one type of card is the action card. Okay, then let's talk about items. So I'm gonna just kind of move this to the side here. So um, another type of card is uh, an item card. Now, item cards have a few different types. This is a a disposable item. So um, let's take a look at your character board right here, okay? The character board has two, two slots and these are for uh, equipping items. Now um, in order to use an item 
see, you can have, let's say, I can have bonus cards in my hand. I can have up to five in my hand, actually. But um, in order for me to be able to use any equipment in battle, if I'm entering battle, it has to be already equipped. So I can't be in battle and then all of a sudden equip a, uh, a weapon that won't work. So, uh, you know, even if it's a disposable item, I have to equip it. And each character has up to two slots. Uh, of course, there are certain things that will allow you to gain more slots and whatnot. But, um, you know, one bad thing about uh, uh, equipping items, though, there are certain things that, uh, abilities that allow people to break items or steal items for you, from you. So be wary of that, too. And, of course, you might have a lot of good stuff in your hand and, you know, there's just not enough room. So you only equip the ones, you did, the things that you want. Um, okay, so talking about this, a disposable item is, once I equip it, here, I'll try to pull this up in case you want to read it. Um, once it's equipped, uh, you can use it at any time. So you can use it during, like this this one, this uh, heal potion, you can use it any time during battle, or you can use it any time during quest mode. So, but once you use it, it's discarded. So that's why there was that discard pile right next to the... Uh, the bonus deck right here so once I use it I discard it right next to it and I probably should have zoomed the camera out a little more because you probably can't see that but there is a discard pile right here so I'm just discarding right here so the heal potion basically basically says roll one die and get that amount gain that amount of uh, uh, traits which is your health so I'll just roll this say oh I gained two so I'll put two on my board and we'll talk about the traits in just a little bit the next type of uh, item is an equipable item. Equipable item, um, they stay equipped and they don't go away when you use it. Now, like for this one, this is Magic Compass. You can spend five magic to search the uh, the location deck for a card, and um, you know put it into play. And this is kind of cool because you're you're scrying your deck to look for certain things that might help you during your quest or. Maybe you really need a certain location that uh, would be beneficial for you or may hinder your opponent. So this would be a pretty good one um, for you. But uh, let's just put it here. Another type of um, item. There's like shield and armor and there's different types of weapons. And uh, okay, so let's talk about let's talk about the weapons first. Okay, there are weapons like regular weapons like this okay so the weapon right here so, some of them don't have abilities some of them do uh, you'll say you'll see that okay this one right here uh, gives you plus two attack and but it requires one strength for you to uh, equip so once you equip it you, you pay your, your you pay your trait your one strength to equip but then uh, afterwards as long as it's equipped, you, you know, you don't have to pay it again unless you de-equip it. If for some reason you de-equip it and then you want to equip it again, you have to pay again your uh, one, well, for specifically for this, your one strength cost to put it on. But uh, some weapons they have, or armor or, or whatnot, have uh, secondary abilities. This one says you may pay, or you may spend one strength during your attack, so this is obviously during battle mode, to gain a bleed to your attack. And bleed, what that is, uh, is you roll a die and you add that value to your existing attack. So this is a very good card. Next up, we have, uh, this is a flame shield right over here. So if you notice over here, it ha it's a plus two for the defense, but it also has a minus one movement. It's a heavy shield. So it's going to make you slower. So Robin can move five. Now with this equip, he can only move four. If you notice on the bottom, uh, there's two green slots. So this is a little different than um, you know a few different types of games. Usually in a game, uh, okay, let's say you attack me for five. I have a shield that defends for two. I'm going to defend for two. So I have to worry about three damage. Okay, after that attack is over, you're going to attack me again, you attack me for four, I, def I had to defend for two, and then whatever the uh, two damage, i got to figure out what to do with it. Well, it's a little different in, in our game. Um, 
Battle Royale tries to uh, simulate a little bit more of the combat elements. So um, you can choose to absorb attacks with your, your armor. Okay, so for example, this one has two defense, right? That's why there's two slots. So let's say you attack me for uh, two. Okay, I don't want to take any hits. I could say, okay, I'm going to block everything with the shield. The shield gets destroyed. So it gets discarded uh, because it absorbed two of the hits and it, you pretty much broke the shield, but I didn't take any hits from it, right? Um, you could do it where you can kind of like use the shield slightly and just kind of bang your attack out of the way. So if you attack me for two, I say, okay, I'm going to just you absorb one with the shield and then I'll take one or I'll worry about how to, uh, you know, do something with that one, one extra hit. So that means... This shield now, it has only one more uh, one more hit left and it goes away. So the question is now, okay, if you attack me, let's say for five, and I defend with the shield, do I do I get a defense of two or defense of one? Well, you only get a defense of one because there's only one slot left. So after that, the shield is gone. Okay, so. But like for this this shield right here, and I remember I used the word absorb, okay? So on here it says the special ability is since it's a flame shield, it prevents two ice damage before damage is absorbed. So if you attack me with five attack that has ice status on it and I block with the shield, before anything happens, I already reduce your attack down to three. So with three then I figure out, well, do I want to absorb two or one or, or whatnot? So, you know, having a flame, sh uh, flame shield is pretty good. All right. So, we have legendary weapons. Uh, so, or legendary items, I'm sorry. It doesn't have to be a weapon. But um, legendary, uh, this one in particular, the Wonderland Axe, uh, legendary weapons belong to specific characters in the game. But if you do get this item, any character could use it. So Captain Hook could use this, no problem. But um, so if Captain Hook uses it, he gains three attack. But it's uh, it's a pretty heavy uh, axe, so it's minus one movement, and it requires two strength to equip. So, but if you're Alice and you have this, then things change. You get to add an additional uh, plus one attack. So now it's a, a four attack, and you may spend two strength to gain break to your attack. So it adds an extra ability and it adds a plus one if you're Alice. Now, kind of, there's one thing cool about this is, okay, let's say you are Captain Hulk and you take this weapon and you're so happy because you took it before I do. And I, let's say I have Alice in my party or I am, uh, I'm using Alice. So Alice can do a quest and uh, Alice let's say does a quest that allows her to get the Wonderland Axe. Well, all, the, all these legendary uh, items are magically linked with the owner. So let's say Hook is using this axe to fight someone right now. And uh, I finished a quest. And um, all of a sudden, I should be rewarded the Wonderland Axe. Well, what happens is it gets removed from uh, Hook's uh, uh, item slot and automatically goes into my hand. So all of a sudden, the laugh is on. Uh, the last laugh is on, on on Alice because Hook all of a sudden doesn't have a weapon to fight with while he's in battle, and uh, Alice now has the the weapon that she should have had. Um, you know uh, that was rightfully hers. So that's one one cool thing about quests and legendary um, equipable items. Now there's a the last type of item is okay. Here's here's a boss called Drake. Okay, so um, in in the game there are different uh, types of bosses, but in the demo kit there's only one. There's Drake, and his reward for one of his rewards for defeating him is the Flame Sword. Now the Flame Sword is a powerful sword. Um, that's why it's an epic equipable quest item. Uh, it requires a strength one strength one magic one willpower trait to equip. It gives you plus five attack, minus one movement, but all your attacks gain fire status. Now that's pretty important because there are some characters that are weak against fire. 
So that, you know, and there are and certain cards, not in the demo kit, but there are certain cards in the core game where you can make someone specifically weak in some sort of, tr uh, some sort of um, element. So you can make someone weak in, in, in fire and then equip this and then attack him and that's like that. But the fire, uh, the flame sword does have a weakness. The caveat is um, if someone is defending with something water based, the flame sword automatically gets minus one attack. So that's the only bad thing about the flame sword. But you could try it out on your character, um, you know, at onset just to see how powerful it is. It's up to you. So a character card right here has different things on it. You have your persuasion um, value. So if I want to have Robin Hood join my party, what I'll need is four per persuasion points, uh, four persuasion traits, I'm sorry, to add him to my um, party. And if I do add him, these traits right here, um, they automatically go to me this one time. Now, if Robin leaves my party and joins it again, I don't get these traits again. Uh, every character will have a, a different uh, ability at the bottom as well. So, um, when when they come out of the bonus deck, I have different options. I could choose to put them in my party, but if I don't have enough persuasion points, I'm going to have to, well, you know, I'm going to have to uh, say, you know, no. <laughs> so, uh, I could put him in my hand, save, save him for later, or I can attack him. If I do attack him, then um, you know I'll enter battle mode, and uh, you know the goal of course the the reason why I want to attack Robin Hood is if I defeat him I do get a kill point, um, which helps with my overall end game. So um, that's the other type, and I guess since I have Robin Hood right here, might as well um, I will pick Robin Hood. So let me just put him aside for now. So when we talk about the character board and whatnot, I'll use Robin as my example. Okay, so quests are the next type of thing. So uh, when you look at quests, I told you there are three different tiers. Um, if when you start off the game, uh, you actually start off on the Dragon Inn location. The Dragon Inn is going to be your neutral location. No one can attack you while you're on it. You can't attack while you're on it. So uh, ba and basically, everyone starts off here. And if anyone's on here, it's kind of like their safe haven. But you can't be on here for more than one turn. So I can't just kind of stay here and no one can attack me or anything like that. Uh, when you're on the Dragon Inn location, one thing you can do is you can uh, get a quest. Um, because it is a tavern, uh, per se. So um, depending on your reputation points, you don't have to discard reputation points to get quests. It's just if you have that many um, on your character board you can get one quest based on that. You can have up to uh, you can have up to three quests um, uh, that are active on your on your board. Um, basically let's take a look at a quest for example this one quest right here well, I don't want to do that one this one quest right here is, uh, this requires a reputation of four. This is uh, your hero, my hero. This is Mulan's quest. So what she needs to do is she needs to, uh, if, I if I make this active, then I would have to intercept an attack on a player with a health of five or lower and defeat the enemy for them. To intercept, I must be adjacent to the player when they enter battle. So my reward, if I am able to do this, is one reputation and the jade sword. Um, so that's, you know, well, one thing about this is Mulan doesn't have to be the only one that can do this. Anyone can do this um, if they choose to. It's just whoever does this will get the jade sword. Uh, and like I said, if Mulan finishes it, no matter who has a jade sword, uh, she'll still get it. And if it's not in play, she'll just cycle through the bonus uh, deck until she finds it and then puts it in her hand. Um, some uh, quests have durations which require you to finish it within a certain amount of time. So here's your location. You have your, um, regu you have your regular basic uh, ones like shore, ruins, grasslands, forests, and then within them you also have your landmark locations and that's something like the Emerald City, 
And uh, when we go through movement, I'll tell you a little more about the location. Next we have our event cards. And our event cards represent the Trinity. The Trinity are the three uh, queens. The uh, evil queen from uh, Snow White, you have your Frost Queen, and you have the Queen of Hearts. Uh, they, of course, banded together to try to uh, set up this uh, battle royale to try to find themselves a champion. So this deck is uh, this deck is very important for the game because it acts as your timer too. When this deck runs out and there's no more event cards to draw, the game is over. If no one won, then everyone dies and everyone loses pretty much. And the queens just say, oh, "Okay, you guys all, uh, you know, you you guys aren't worthy enough. I'm gonna find some new champions." Uh, possible cha champions. So um, at the beginning of the game, uh, the first player is called the Sundial. And every time it's their turn, the beginning of their turn, they're going to flip this over for everyone. The Queens, what, whatever flips over, um, this affects everyone in play. So it's a global effect. So um, <clears throat> like for example, this one right here uh, is kind of like the good one to get. It's observation. So the Queens are just kind of looking and watching everyone from a distance to see what everyone's doing. But somewhere in here there are different types of um, different types of effects like for example there's speed things up so the queens what they do is they cast some magic for everyone and it says you may redistribute two of your traits on your character cards. Characters gain plus three movement. So it kind of it helps. Uh, some, some of these events help people and uh, some of these events hinder people and the Queen's goal is to try to speed up the game uh, or make things harder or or, or just various things uh, certain events just you flip over it happens and then when the neck when the sundial flips over the next one then it's whatever the next card is but some have durations on it as well so if you notice it has a duration so what does that essentially do to the game? So you know how I mentioned that every flip is a day uh, in fairy tale time. So if you flip something that has a duration like this, so I flip this over, it has a duration uh, of two days, pretty much this effect happens in for two turns. So I kind of extended the, uh, the life of the game. So it, it's a plus and a minus. Uh, so that is <clears throat> an event card. So, okay, tactic cards. Tactic cards are when you pick a character, um, you will pick three, I mean, you will find their three tactic cards to use in the game. So why don't I do this? I'm going to talk about the character board right now. Um, since I do, since I already picked Robin as my character, I'm going to pick Robin's three tactic cards and put the rest just on the side like this. Alright. I'm going to put this here so you can see. So, uh, right away, let's talk about the uh, character board. Uh, you'll notice on the side there are the different traits. Persuasion, willpower, uh, intelligence, strength, and magic. Reputation is not a trait per se. Uh, you gain reputation by uh, completing quests, by defeating different characters, minions, bosses, whatnot, and these are used for um, uh, acquiring quests. Uh, but another feature is you can burn one of these to, um, to, to put a, like burn one for one, to put one trait in any of these slots. So for example, all right, let's say I, my traits are like that. I have one, I have two reputation here. Oh, I need a strength so bad because uh, I need to play this ability that requires strength. So I can make the tough decision to burn one of these reputation points to put it a strength here. Now it's not always advisable because reputation is harder to get. Um, but you know there there are emergency situations that require that. Um, okay, so. Robin's name is here. Behind Robin, there is a bar. In this case, it's green. Uh, it, that's just a quick reference to what faction he's in. Um, each 
faction character has a different color. Like for example, um, I think, I think uh, Grendel. Uh, he's from the horror show faction, so his um, his bar is purple. Um, if you don't want to go by the bar, there is a faction icon right here, so you can just recognize the symbol and uh, figure out what faction that person's in. So Robin Hood is part of the mercenaries, so um, that is the icon, and the mercenary is green. Uh, his health is over here. His health is twenty. Now, health and traits are the same, and you'll you'll see this um, when we talk about battle. Um, basically, when you start the game off, you're like, okay, I pick my character, got his tactic cards, got the token representation of the character. Now, uh, Robin has twenty health, so now I gotta pick. I'm gonna get twenty of these counters, and I can distribute it anywhere I want except reputation. So. Just for just for this example, I'm gonna put oops four under every category. Okay. So that represents 20. Now, uh, I might not want to do that. I might take a look at my um, character card and say, oh, okay, Robin has an ability that uses willpower. Uh, what about his tactics? Nothing here. But on his, on his uh, super move, he has an ability that requires willpower. So I might kind of bias my traits towards willpower just because I know I'll use that more. But once I distribute them, it's locked down, so that's, you know, when I start the game, that is what I'm starting with. So kind of figure out your strategy before you um, you do that. Over here, uh, okay, next to faction is weakness and element. So certain characters have weaknesses against fire or, or uh, holy or dark or ice, and as well as they produce an element as well, like water, or ice, or fire, and whatnot. If someone is weak in, let's say, fire, they automatically, um, when someone attacks them with fire, they take an extra one damage. And you're like, ooh, that's not that bad. But when you have other things in play that deal uh, extra bonuses against uh, weaknesses, uh, it, it can be pretty strong. Um, okay, so you have your item slots here for equipping stuff. And for battle mode, you have your signature moves and your super move. Your super move is kind of like your desperation move, so when um, you have five or less uh, health, and th you know, every, this, death, this super move is, and all the signature moves are different for every character, but the super move for every character is if you have five or below health. So in Robin's case, um, if you have five or below health, I can spend three willpower. So basically, it's saying like, okay, Let's say, I'm like this. I'm just doing this so you get a visual. So I have five health left. So basically, I have five traits. That's pretty bad. Um, but if I want to try a last ditch effort to win the battle or to try to get out of the situation I'm in, I can spend three willpower, which leaves me with only two health left. And unfortunately, it's on intelligence. Uh, so, um,. I can spend three, and when attacked, uh, I can uh, deal uh, bleed damage before any attack, before any defense or attack is uh, uh, like calculated. So let's say you attack me for five, and before I even do any um, do any uh, uh, defense uh, absorption or whatever, I can do bleed damage to you. So think about it as Right as Robin's about to get hit, I shoot an arrow really quickly at you, and so I hit you for three. Let's say you were down to two, I was down to two health, so that would have killed you before your attack even made contact with me, and I'd have to worry about defense. So that's why this might help Robin in that situation. Um, okay, so your tactic cards and your character cards. I, I usually put my character card right here, um, right on that picture, so I can see what my ability is. Uh, on the left side, this is where you'll put your tactic cards. And so I'm going to put my tactic cards like so. Having them like this, horizontal, 
on its side, that that represents that it is uh, inactive or um, disabled. So um, during the game, there are certain abilities or uh, effects or action cards, and even in the battle deck, different ways to allow you to activate it. And you can choose which one you want to activate. Um, you know, uh, you don't have to use your tactic card right away in battle, which is cool. Uh, there are certain tactics for certain characters that are, actually aren't even part of battle that are for quest mode. So you could choose to save them up or you could use them right away and they just get deactivated uh, when you use them. Uh, so it's up to you how you want to strategize using that but they will stay on that side and um, if for some reason um, you are able to get an ally in your party, let's say I, I, I get an ally, I don't know, uh, Mowgli Okay, so oh, here, let me move this out of the way so you can see because uh, I didn't allow myself enough space. But let's say um, Mowgli joins Robin's party. So what I'll do is I'll slide his character card right under here. So now Mowgli is part of Robin's party. Um, his character card will be here and uh, his tactics will be on this side. So Mowgli's tactics will fall under this uh, the side over here or you can put them below it's up to you um, but as you know as you can see now you've gained two more um, item slots so during battle uh, you can actually switch out weapons and use different things as long as uh, they're all equipped okay so let's uh, talk about the some of the battle cards I'm gonna move this all to the side